All right, everyone, welcome back to the Team Fortress TV 8 Team Invitational, sponsored by Zowie. We have come to the grand finale of the grand finals. We are watching the number one seed in ESEA, it's take on the number two seed, mix up in a best of three grand final that has gone to the third map. It took the first one on Cole Plant, mix up just one by a score of five to four on Greenery. And now we come to the final map, the last choice. Uh, it was its choice. And they have picked a second King of the Hill map. And that is Viaduct. Uh, one caster leaves, another one joins. I am joined right now by Lang. What's up, Lang? Yes, it's true, Justin Danford. Uh, I've been called in in the 11th hour to replace uh, really a wearying DJC. He's, he's had a long day. He's sounding pretty tired. But his day is about to get even longer as he has to go play a match with his team. Uh, but I'm here now, so things are okay. We have what should be an intense, intense closer to this series coming up for us. It is Koth Pro Viaduct RC4, a map known for its aggression, a map known for its repeated intense deathmatch-oriented plays, and you have two of the finest dueling teams in this game. Their rivalry has spanned years at this point. They are the best players in the world. Many members of both of these teams have traveled to Europe to play in the international tournaments at I-46 and I-49. Justin, I think we have a treat ready for us. Uh, as as, as RoboSire, uh, very aggressive. How about now? How about now? I think I think you're okay. The the the, the storm has passed. Sometimes I just like to throw a little uh, mix up in there and become a robot. But I've gotten it out of my system. And as I was saying, this map caters to the mix up play style, and I can see what it has done here. They just four one mix up on a different King of the Hill map, Coal Plant. Uh, so th so they're thinking, hey, let's let's go to another one. Let's go to the other one that we play, Viaduct. Uh, but in the past, Mixup has been very strong on this map. So uh, might be the, the mistake, a mistake made by it here, picking this map. But definitely going to be uh, an intense match. It'll be chaotic. We'll probably be yelling at each other. We'll be yelling at you. Uh, I'm sure the teams will be yelling um, at their teammates. It'll be, it's going to be good. And we have all 12 in the server waiting for them to ready up. Um, and yeah, what more could be said about this, this, this matchup uh, that hasn't already been said? I'll tell you what more could be said, Justin Danford, because we're casters and this is what we're supposed to do. Fill time. Um, <laughs> I, I agree with nice. what you say about Mixup and this map, though. I, I want to say that Mixup has an unrivaled pedigree on Viaduct. You know, back when Mixup was, you know, the dominant team, because if, if you're not following the scene, if, you, if you're a bit new to our game, if the Team Fortress TV Zoe Invitational is your first foray into com competitive TF2, then I feel I should tell you that uh, these two teams, Mixup and It, have really been the pinnacle of North American competition in this game for the last few years. And they sort of switch places. As rosters change, as players come and go, as you know, strategies come and go, uh, which team is on top you know, changes. And for one of the periods where Mixup was the more dominant team, they you could not touch them on this map. It was this map and Granary, as we just saw, um, where Mixup was really, really fearsome. So yeah, I'm wondering if it's hubris in, in picking another Koth map is going to come back to haunt them. And of course, during those days of mix of glory on Viaduct, who was playing Demo Man but other than Platinum? Platinum was the Demo Man for the, uh, the mix-up dominance on this map, and he is back on the class tonight. He's been playing it throughout this entire tournament because uh, we did have that switch up when a seagull went to the roaming class. Um, so like we said, might spell doom for it. Of course, both teams are sitting with one map apiece. We have come to the end, my friends, and I'm glad to be with you here, Lang, at the end of all things. Justin. Justin, you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm so excited. I've been sitting here in my room uh, watching both this game and the gentle five inches of snowfall that's been happening all day. Uh, it's, it's beautiful in every sense of the word. Absolutely gorgeous. It, it's been a good day for TF2. I'm, I'm real happy about it. That sounds so picturesque. I can just it imagine really you seated in your room, the nice gentle dusting of snow outside, giving the winter feel. And what, you know, what better of a Christmas gift than really this, this invitational, this extra TF2, because we only had the ESEA season, right? Season 15, which by the way is coming to its conclusion, at least for the regular season, this week. And that would be it until then. But no, no, along comes Enigma. Like Santa Claus himself, himself, because Santa Claus is one person, along with Zowie, 
and they give us this excellent, excellent day of TF2. And we have tried to make it an excellent broadcast for you guys. And we have come to the end now. We're just waiting for the teams to ready up so we can get started and bring you guys the final conclusion to this greatness. So, Justin Danford, I understand, as you said, this tournament is sponsored by Zoe, Zoe Peripherals. And uh, just in case the viewers at home don't know, these teams are playing for first place is going to get six Zoe FK mice. Second place is going to get six Zoe GTF rough mouse pads. I'm personally using a Zoe GTF mouse pad right now. It's fantastic. But actually, we are live right now, and I have my eyes on the Zalox cam heading out to this initial mid fight, getting good long distance spam on that area below cliff, trying to deny mix up from coming up on their high ground, and actually doing a really good job. You see them forced to jump and play passively behind that rock, and really, it looks like it has much more confident footing here. But as I say that, Seagull comes in with a huge bomb. Takes down Shrugger and actually the kills are going Edward. Seagull's bomb really opened it up there, turned eyes every single which way except forward. And now Mix Up looking much more controlling on this point here, Danford. Yeah, and R left alive. Uh, thought about jumping in and bombing the medic. Thinks a little bit better of it, collects some health, and he's going to chill around the battlements uh, of his sniper area. Uh, but Mix Up definitely looking very strong there. Had a nice bomb coming from Seagull, and they followed up that damage very, very strongly. They, of course, are sitting now with the 100% Uber Charge in Dust only at 13. Is he healing? How come in the. Yeah, okay, fine. Finally, now he's healing. So a huge deficit from Indust, uh, and the time ticking away, ever ticking away, in favor of Mixup. Yeah, so we see the suicide starting to come out from it. They're doing the four-man suicide, which is really a standard play on Viaduct. Generally, when... Oh, wait. Did Harblue... Harblue dropped. Okay. I was about to say that that four-man suicide didn't work out, but boy, was I wrong. I so now... Now we have it and Indust sitting at what is going to turn out to be a basically a 100% advantage. So, you know, they're starting to move out. They're peeking out on this right-hand side, and the Uber's going to come any second now, Bloodsire. Yeah, and here we go. They are pushing out from the right, like you said. Uh, they are getting position. They are getting time on the point. Just trying to cap it a little bit. They are pushing Mix Up out of here. Having been forced to pop over with another huge air shot coming in. Atlantis getting very, very hurt there. Platinum's going to kill Shrugger. The red is going to... Now the seagull, he finds himself finding a whole bunch of guys, and Enigma is going to clean him up, aided by Platinum, and it's gone the way of it so far. As they re, they have recapped the point. They've lost three guys in the process, uh, and mix up our poise now, Lang, to take this back. Yeah, we see Zalox here once again on that left side, trying to get some spam off, maybe see if he can soften up the grouped up members of Mixup who are trying to cap the point, but that's not going to happen. He gets pushed back. Uh, we have Harblue sitting at approximately a 30% uber advantage. Uh, it's still sort of standing out by their cliff, trying to get some spam. They're not at such a disadvantage where they feel like they have to fall back. Mix up playing very defensively, though. I like the setup that they have. They have their soldiers on the high ground on either side of the point, which is a unique setup. I can't say I've ever really seen that before. Then they have that scout sort of on the center rock, so really trying to defend against these four-man suicides. I guess that drop. Uh, sort of scare them. Seagull actually starting to creep up. I'm watching Seagull right now. He goes in for the bomb. He's got a bead on Indust, and he actually makes him pop. Now I'm going to switch over my eyes to Harblue as he starts to back up, buffing his players. He wants to pop this as late as possible, potentially not even pop it at all, but he eats a direct rocket and is forced to Uber immediately, buffing his scouts. They want to go forward. They need to punish it. They need to make them regret extending this far, but no, it looks like Indust is just barely going to manage to get out, but as I say, that Platinum goes down. Indust is coming back out to heal his team, firing arrows every which way, and there's two members down for Mixup, two members down for it as well, but it is on the point, and they have scouts and demo, and that are those are the clashes you want to have on this midpoint, but Indust, unfortunately, gets juggled against the rock, gets taken out, and now it's just a melee. It's chaos on the point. There's players everywhere, just scrappy, scrappy fights with no buffs either which way. Platinum and Enigma now moving forward, trying to fight these last few members. Lansky going for the miracle air shot, not able to make it happen, and Zalox once again on his own, spamming as he can, trying to back away from this point. We had mentioned that the map is chaotic. And uh, just a little bit there. And didn't have time to breathe there with all the action that was <laughs> happening. Uh, but let's pay attention to the clock now. Mixup have recapped it, and they have 20 seconds left before they take the first round. Uh, it are well aware of that, and they are coming onto the point. They try to take it back and do some damage. The Uber advantage is no advantage. The Ubers are the same, and the frags are going all for it right now. Tyler takes down RR, uh, and, and it's three alive, though. Har uh, TLR, 
Hard blue and squid, a big bomb coming in. Uh, on to Indus. Tyler takes him down, so no medic once again for the red team. Tough lives right now for Indus and it, but it managed to cap. They need to find some way though, Lang, to try to, to hold out for two minutes. Whereas Mixup just need to cap for six seconds and they're about to have Uber. So I'm interested in how Mixup are going to play Harblue's position here, because he has a 100% uber advantage, but I don't know if they want to pop in this push in here, because they have the healing and positioning advantage. Harblue's still moving up aggressively, and he is forced to pop. That is exactly what it needed. They needed that uber pop early. So now it are just going to back off. They're going to let Mixup have this point, I think. Actually, no! Thomas Lansky goes in. He wants to fight this. All of it is here aggressively on this point. Oh, because they can't. They can't let Mixup have it. There's no time left, and that is round one in phase of classic mix-up yeah they could absolutely not let mix cap it with that time they need to get on it rr was on sniper there he took down a seagull uh, but after that couldn't really do much in way of getting on the point he is quite slow and his dps at close range not the greatest uh but here we are mid number two the first of the all oh, the the grand finale first round goes to mix up here is round number two no frags being exchanged as of yet uh, both teams vying for a position. We have actually a soldier come out of tunnel. Enigma's gonna take down Banny. Platinum takes down Indus, and Platinum takes down Shrugger too. Uh, two frags do go off uh, for the red team. Enigma and Seagull do die, uh, but Squid is gonna clean up RR, and only Zaylox left alive now as he is bombing in to try to put some damage onto Harblue. He gets cleaned up though by Platinum. Ooh, and Harblue staying alive, and it once again are back on their on the ropes. Let's say that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, are, are it just going to go for the four-man suicide again? Because, I mean, last time they did that, you know, they managed to drop Hard Blue. Uh, RR actually going down early to a trap from Mixup's Platinum. And it looks like the rest of it are just sort of in a holding pattern right now. They're trying to slowly move forward. Zaylox going to his old favorite place underneath that cliff. Uh, but it looks like Banny and Lansky went in for a suicide play, and they go down. Not able to make Hard Blue pop, so we're just going to see it build the rest of this Uber up. And yeah. I imagine as that ticks over to 100%, they'll start moving out. The idea of the four-man suicide is to make it a four-man suicide so that there's four of you that can't get focus fired individually. Unfortunately, when RR died, it became a three-man staggered uh, suicide, which they all then died individually. Uh, but now we do see that Ubers are going to be equal for both teams. They are at 100%. Mix up still with that strong defense with that soldier on the rock, putting a whole lot of spam into the red team. They are actually forced to pop early once again. Hard blue now pops. He reciprocates, but a tiny bit better Uber. Shrugger takes down a seagull. Blue still all over the point and they have ticked a minute off the clock right now they need mix up does need to clean up the uh the eight members who are back in the backfield such as rr who kills r blue and platinum and tlr with a triple kill r coming up huge the roamer for it right now squitter on the point finally or squitter in, squitter in the backfield finally take down uh rr not before it are able to cap the middle point a lot of, a lot of two letter acronyms to be saying it's you know hard. you know RR on IT. So we, we see it here holding the point. Actually, the suicide play coming in. I'm not sure where that was. I heard a lot of scatter guns firing. It's that scout from Mixup. He's in. He's actually forcing all of it back. Wow, I'm not sure how it got pushed back so far. Seagull going for the miracle air shot onto Indus. Not able to make it connect. And wow, with, with very little bloodshed, Mixup managed to force it off that point just through superior positioning, spam, and pressure. But it immediately responds by jumping back in and saying, no, we're going to go ahead and take this right back from you. But mix up it's playing that time very well currently sitting at a minute ahead on the overall round clock yeah and let's take a look at the defense this time for it we've seen a lot of it um from mix up and a very successful defense from mix up uh now it's time for it to have control of the map let's see what they elect to do uh, let's see if they can weather the bombs that are sure to be coming in well actually mix up are gonna have their uber up so let's see how they play lang Looks like they're going on their right side, gonna push out from there. It getting some good spam onto them. The Uber is popped early, as you often have to do when you are the attacking team. Lancey's gonna clean up TLR, who got disconnected from the Uber by a little bit. The red Uber is reciprocated. Uh, let's see if they get more kills out of this. They need to get more kills. Of course, mix up not doing anything in the way of pressuring the point. Looks like they're just gonna reset things, go back to the drawing board, try to build that that Uber. Now, I'm actually watching Seagull right now, who's in the backfield of it. He does get spotted out by that scout, though. He goes for the play onto Indus, not able to make it happen. And actually, there's bombs coming from it over onto Mixup as well. Both medics still alive, though, and they're at pretty even Ubers. It has a numbers advantage, though, so they're going to be able to hold on to this point for the time being and continue ticking that clock down as they just finally surpass Mixup in cap time.
Now, traditionally, there's two ways to hold this map. One is very, very aggressive, and one is back on the point. Looks like both teams have elected to go uh, the safer route, which is on the point. Unfortunately, the downside to that is you do allow the other team to get out uh, pretty deep uh, and have room to work a bomb or, or pick of some kind. Ubers are about to be equal with both teams at 100% as Mixup are starting to pressure the point. The red Ubers actually popped first this time. Uh, Lansky was trying, was very, very hurt, had to try to get in on a scout. No frags have been uh, uh, taken as of yet in us with the surf of the century. Cowabunga is over to the health back, but Tyler is gonna meet him with a rocket, and the frags are falling for Mixup. It's a wipe for it, and only Tyler, the casualty for Mixup, and they're gonna have the point. Yeah, that was a beautiful surf from Indust, I tell you. He went from one side of the map right to the other. Just really fantastic air strafe and good air control there. But it sort of corralled his team all into one area, and then Tyler's follow-up bomb just did way too much damage, and yeah, it wiped it. Yep, now we're gonna be back to the drawing board as we do see Harblue and Mixup grinding out that Uber with the Boston Basher, which is a lovely weapon. And it don't want to give Mixup any room to breathe here. They're trying to pressure them. They know where they've been holding, so they're getting as much spam up there as possible. Forcing the soldier down, actually, and a pipe uh, gets fed right to that soldier who, who takes the damage. Takes about uh, half his health away. That's going to allow it to get some position here on the point. And actually force the blue Uber. Red are about 25% away from their Uber, so they need to back it up. Make sure they get it. They've done their job. They forced the Uber, taking it out of their enemy's hands. R is going to get a kill on Enigma, and that's just bonus at this point. And these are all bonuses. They're taking down three Zalox with a double kill onto Squid and a Seagull. This is bad news for Mixup. So here's what it did there that made that work so well. It were forced out by Mixup, and they sort of feigned that they were going to back up into their spawn and hold there. At that point, Mixup started to move forward because they wanted to get that forward hold going. But the way it timed that was it came right back out when the combat classes of Mixup were in the forward holds, but the rear flank, being hard blue and platinum, weren't in position for the forward hold yet. So it was able to pick up those four people who were at that point overextended for like three seconds and uh, force hard blue and platinum to just back out. So that was really, really good, tight timing play from it. Five, two seconds left on the clock, lying zero, so we're going into overtime for Mixup as they're trying desperately to get on that point. Only Indus left alive with Zalox. Not enough. Indus goes down, Zalox left alive. Mixup are going to get it. They have to hold for 20 seconds. The spawns for uh, it are coming in now, but Zalox is on a pretty long spawn given the time that's left. He's only going to have about eight seconds left. When he's when it's all said and done, he gets out there. A whole lot of stickies being put on the point by Platinum. Doesn't want anybody to touch it, and really, it needs to touch it. They need to get on it, and whoever does is going to die. Here they go. They're getting on the point. Banny gets a kill into hard blue, but nobody on the point. This is going to go again to Mixup, and 2-0 now in favor of Mixup, and they are poised to be your grand final winners already. Justin, are we going to have an accurate prediction for once? We said Mixup were the dominant team on Viaduct, at least in the past, and that they had a real chance of showing that once more, and you know, it's certainly... Standing up 2-0, it's a good place to be. But as I say that, we're into this third mid-fight. Platinum moving forward, but getting pressured by the scout. He can't fight him at close range with that loose cannon. Platinum is going to go down. Right now, I'm switching over to Enigma. He's got a lot of cleanup work to do here. Takes down, in, uh, not in this. He actually assists Squid in taking down three players. Wow, Enigma and Squid with fantastic cleanup right there at the end. And it's only Banny alive for it. Yeah, and once again, we are in the, old, the same old familiar position. If you were it, you are down the point. Need to find a way to heal up your guys, get into middle. Try to crack this aggression from uh, Mixup, which is just too dominant right now for it to handle. Uh, they're getting on the point. They're going to try to buy some time from this. Actually, we see RR bombing in onto Harblue. Takes down one, takes down Squitter and Harblue. RR with a super bomb. Man, he's going to come in, take down Enigma too. And here's the rebomb from uh, the Mixup team, but it's not going to be as effective as RR's bomb. Indus is still up, and that's going to give them, when it is all said and done, about a 50% advantage and the point. So I'm wondering when the crits is going to come out. We haven't seen it yet. I have to imagine, you know, it, it's rare that we see a Viaduct match go by without a single crits. Maybe they'll bust it out in the second half. But uh, Mixup not waiting for it to get Uber. They want to push in immediately. Enigma plus forwarding so hard across that point. Once again, him and Squid doing a fantastic job of focus firing and taking down Banny from a pretty good distance. One player down for Mixup, two players down for it, including the pocket soldier. Make that three as Tyler goes in and takes down Zalox oh, aggressively. And no. Seagull comes in on the flank, makes Indus drop. Drop the Uber, he caught him almost literally with his pants down. He had the overdose out trying to run away, trying to defend himself. And now, Mixup are going to have this clock ticking down, sitting at 100% Uber. 
if you get a chance to watch this VOD or you get this STV, you make sure you watch that from the overhead uh, position. That entire push from middle all the way back into the its lower right as R takes down Enigma. But that was just a beautiful play from Mix Up running in just a wave of death into it and completely destroying them. And then on the back side of that, you had Seagull with, the, with an awesome flying, taking the Uber away from it and Indus. As now the blue Uber for mix-up is pop. Platinum's gonna take down Zalok, so no demo for the red team, no medic as Tyler shotties him down. Things are looking very, very, very bad for it right now. Tyler's gonna get a second shotty kill onto RR. And here comes a Seagull onto a scout, takes down Banny. Only Shrugger and Lansky left alive. Shrugger's gonna pistol down Banny. And Lansky is over on the left side of the Sniper Hill with 70 HP, and he's got to back it out. Shrugger did die to Squitter, but Ubers once again, Lang, are in the favor of Mixup and Harblue by a large margin. I, I tell you, Justin, this is a Mixup on fire like I haven't seen them since the formation of it. Mixup are just dominant. They're scary in this game. This is how they used to be. This is a return to form. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. No, I mean it's absolutely true, and I believe a lot of that is the way Platinum plays this this map and the amount of damage that he puts out uh, with his game sense. He focuses the right people and is able to to assist every battle that he possibly can. Um, and we really haven't seen a level of dominance like you said from Mix Up, and I think that's because we haven't seen Platinum on demo uh, as when they were so dominant. But uh, we do see. It trying to get something going here. Shrugger is going to pistol down a Seagull, but a Seagull got a double before that. Platinum with a dunk kill onto Zalox. So again, uh, Zalox goes down by the hands of Platinum. In the meantime, Mixup have retained possession of this middle of this singular cap point, and they are about to pass one minute on the clock. Yeah, both Ubers even, uh, neither medic close to it. So we have an all out melee on this point here. Banny drawing first blood onto Enigma. It trying to take advantage of that five versus six situation. Frag's going every which way, but it currently com coming out on top in this. Uh, Harblu going down, Platinum and Seagull, the only ones left. Seagull still in a little bit, trying to see if he can find an opening, but no, the flank is going to be completely covered, and Seagull is going to be forced to back up. But Platinum, oddly aggressively, going up onto that China area, trying to get any sticky spam he can, pick off any weak players maybe, but no. We're going to see Indust right now sitting at 75% uber advantage, and expect to see some suicides here for Mixup. Yeah, this is what we need to see happen. We need to find a way, if you're it, to not have Indus die to the bomb, because Indus has been dying over and over and over again, uh, whereas Harblue, aside from that one drop, has done a pretty good job of kiting the bombs uh, and staying alive. Mixup definitely more superior in their ability to take the Uber out of the hands of it so far. Um, you can see right now they're trying to get aggressive, and actually they've taken it away in one way or the other as they forced the pop. RR was on Sniper, taking down Squitter, and he takes down a Seagull, so a two go down for Mixup, but that's they don't care. They got what they wanted. They made it spend in their uber to kill those two guys and now mix up our poise to use their uber to push back in into the point yeah just it are having a hard time holding on to these ubers which means they're having a hard time holding on to the point har blue now it's 75 percent uber advantage mix up is getting ready to move in they actually pop insanely early i don't know if they got forced or if they're just trying to play it safe but Zalox picks up two in the midst of the uber somehow that's going to be a miracle play from Zalox. And Banny gets on the point, he stops the cap, and that's crucially important. 40 seconds left and counting for it on the cap, only 35 for Mixup. They could not let that cap go. Uh, both teams have some players down. The Medic, crucially though, is up for Mixup, where it, as Indust is down, but still, that clock is ticking down for it. 25 seconds and counting, Danford. Yeah, they might, Mixup might get this Uber just in time to make one last play here. They are at 65%, and I believe they will do just that. 15 seconds left on the clock. It are going to have to give this up and then hope to retake it with the 35 seconds left on the clock, but they're going to have to deal with that obstacle of the Uber that is in the hands of Harbour. He's getting into his spot. He is in his zone right there, his little home. He's crouched in the corner, waiting for his Uber, which he has. 20 seconds left on the clock. It need to recap, but they're going to have to fight an Uber to do it. I love this positioning for Mixup. They're playing so far back. They're saying, no, you come to us. And with 13 seconds left on the clock, the Ubers pop for Mixup. Zalox going for the miracle pill. He actually hits it, but that target was saved in midair by the Uber flash from Harblue. And now three uh -oh. players down on it. Danford, this round I think is going to go for Mixup, and we're going to be at 3 0. -oh. Yeah, RR did get a headshot onto uh, a scout there, but it's not going to matter. As nobody gets on the point, we are in a quick. 03 deficit or in our favor of, of mix up eight are in the deficit we are not in the deficit we are just enjoying ourselves casting this match yeah i mean i'm holding tab right now look at squid 50 points enigma behind him at 35 but just 
amazing performance from Squid, I gotta say. 50 points is truly impressive. Outscoring Indus, the medic for the red team. Uh, but uh, once again, just this aggression from it, although this is this mid's a bit bloodier than maybe the last one. Uh, the medic for red team for it is still up though, and Ooh. that's gonna prove to be the most important thing. Tyler, the only player left alive for mix-up. He thought about maybe going in for a suicide, but no, Harblue is spawned. Tyler needs to get back to him. He needs to start building this Uber. Uh, they need to meet up. Indust currently sitting at 70% advantage. Yeah, and of course, Mixup only need to win this round to win the entire tournament. Now, if you are just joining us, you are watching the grand final of the TFTFE Invitational 8 Team Tournament, sponsored by Zowie. Uh, the teams are fighting out for some Zowie gear. Zaylock's going to take down Harblue, and that is huge as Indus has his Uber Charge and can now back it up a little bit. The time is in favor of it, so all the cards are in their hand. They just need to make sure they play them correctly. Yeah, it seems like it are finally starting to understand that they need to have a little bit more aggression to put Mixup on the defensive. So oh far, Mixup have been playing their game, and it have been trying to respond, trying to adapt. And that, while certainly is not a place you want to be in any map, it's really where you don't want to be on Viaduct. You can't let the other team dictate your positioning here, because they're just going to play the clock on you. And, you know, you might seem like you're winning if you get a single... You might take the hill back for a moment, but no, they're just going to have superior uber timing and they're going to be able to get more cap time overall. So right now we have some suicides coming in from Mixup. Indus not popping his uber yet. He's on that cliff, actually doing an amazing surf. Once again, he still hasn't popped his uber. Oh. My god, finally is forced. I think that was the Tyler with the suicide bomb coming in. But Harblue now, his uber is going to tick up to 100%. And we're going to see them push out, but you know it have this round half in the bag already minute and a half hold that's fantastic i like what i'm seeing out of this it hold right now they've pushed up a lot of their members and they're going with a much more aggressive hold they talked about the two versions of the viaduct hold they're using the more aggressive one right now to try to pop that uber before it gets a chance to come out barbu takes a little bit of splash but he's okay he's at 122 hp takes some more splash down to 96 still hasn't popped down to 67 finally forces uh, uh he is forced to pop as three frags go onto it, Banny Lansky are all dead, uh, but it looks like Indus is able to back it out. He's going to leapfrog his Uber with about a 60% advantage, and with all that time that Lang talked about in favor of it, uh, they have all the time that they need to come back in with this Uber advantage and try to take a round for themselves. Yeah, so now it can really dictate the pace of the rest of this round. Because they have so much more cap time, they can afford to have riskier Ubers, and they can afford to do plays that have a higher success rate, but maybe don't let you hold on to the point as long. Basically, they can afford to exchange. The more exchanges that happen, even if they're even, will overall make this round go in favor of it because they have so much more cap time. But as I pontificate endlessly, the Uber is forced from it, horribly trying to back out, and he does manage to get out 70% Uber for him. He's not going to be able to build for a while though so during this crucial time i think it should be building as hard as they can to try to close that delta between these two teams ubers i was thinking by the way your vocabulary is just top notch but i was thinking <laughs> the exact same thing um with with the everyone going down except power blue uh but he is close enough to the uber that he is going to get it now banny is going to take down enigma going to drop to squitter or it takes down platinum though so no demo man for this push the pop is early uh, for the blue team, unfortunately, as uh, Indus looked like he's about to go down. As he gets a saw, not going to be enough unless he gets two more. He gets it! Can he pop? No! Wow, Indus getting the f four sores? I four sores. Four, four sores. Four seven sores. years ago. Four sores. Yes. Just take it away, man. Four sores and seven lands ago, mix up was the best on this map. For a while, they kind of fell out of favor. But now... We have Mixup on the point. They have two minutes on their clock as compared to its only 33 seconds. But Harblu sitting at Uber Advantage and Mixup taking up these positions. This defensive strategy they seem to have just recently championed and are so comfortable with. And they're starting to tick down this clock, seeing where this round goes. Yep, Harblu about to get his Uber in us only at 40%. But like he said, time very much in their favor. Clock slowly ticking down in favor of Mixup though. Uh, and there goes Banny. Banny goes down. That's going to be the door that Mixup wants open to bully out the rest of the hit members and say, don't you come into our yard. We got more guys than you. Also, we have an Uber, and that'll make us shiny and invulnerable. And that's hard to deal with. Um, and that's where we are right now. Indus <laughs> about to get his Uber lang uh, as both teams are reaching full strength. Six players and buffed. Mix up in their little home, their their area of serenity, as they sit there, safe, free of harm. Uh, finally, eight are getting on the point, which is going to force the mix-up pop. And there we go. Both teams are going to reciprocate, so both teams are ubered. 
Now let's see who can get the better of the frags. Looks like it's gonna be mixed up as they get two quick ones onto Shrugger and RR. Enigma's gonna take down Indus, and wow, it's all mixed up as eight or white. I love the way Mixup are playing this. So when they're when they're playing defensively, they hide like four players on that cliff so that there's no sight line, so that it has to come really far forward to force the initial pop out of Mix. But then the moment Mix feels pressured, they just come out, just guns blazing, and they force the fight to be on its side of the map. So that if you know, if the fight goes well for Mixup, then bam, they can spawn camp. If it doesn't go well, they can retreat and they're still on the high ground. That's just brilliant, brilliant positioning coming out of Mixup. Yeah, and I don't know if we've actually ever seen that before. I remember them holding up there, and it's very, very effective. And they're on the cusp of winning this tournament. Uh, 26 seconds for, uh, well, 20 seconds now, counting down for it, but only 26 left on the clock. The blue Uber was popped. Only three left alive for it. They need to make sure that they get in and get this round. Otherwise, it's lights out for them, Lang. And uh, we have a cap for Mixup. And so it's slowly ticking away. 20 seconds left. Yeah, Mixup have really equalized this clock. 15 to 13 seconds left. It really need to get on this point. This is going to be a no Uber exchange. There's no time for Ubers in this. It's starting to move forward. The bomb's coming in aggressively. Coordinated Shrugger picking up first blood on the Seagull. That's the rumor for Mixup going down. Not the biggest pick, but it'll have to do. Banny going down to Enigma. Platinum has an excellent spam angle here, but he's pressured too much with this guy that's close to him. He's not able to really make too much happen with it. Lansky, too helpful. But right now, everybody is dead. Gotta get on everybody the point. Everybody is Gotta dead. Gotta get on the point. Why did yeah. they not get on the point? I have no idea why Lansky didn't jump to the point right there. I mean, RR had a huge bomb taking out himself along with two others, including the medic. Did he? I why mean, why he did they not get on the point, Justin? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm just trying not to think about it. We had a medic alive and we had a soldier alive for it. And he decided to not go on the point, which would inevitably probably win them that round because there was only one guy left alive for mix-up. I don't know. That, that was, was weird. That was kind of anticlimactic. I... I... They, they, they sort of let that one fall through their hands, but you know what? Still, we had the grand finals go into a best of three. Uh, some really just fantastic gameplay that we saw. And that is it. Mix up are the winners of the first ever Zoe 8 team or Team Fortress TV Zoe 8 team invitational. There's a lot of words in this title. Yeah, there's so many words. I've been saying it all day and I keep mixing it up every time. Yeah. Speaking of mix up, do we want to get some of them in here for an interview? I'm down if you're down, if they're down. Why don't, why don't you message them and see if they're down? Yeah. And while you do that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give some shout-outs. So, of course, uh, big thanks to Zoe for hosting this tournament and uh, sponsoring this for us, providing prizes. Uh, thanks to Tragic, tragicservers.com, for providing the servers and source TVs for this event. Uh, there are some coupon codes that we have going as part of this. And if you scroll down below our video player on Twitch, I believe you can find those. If you're looking for a game server, check out tragicservers.com. They've sponsored many of our events in the past, and they're always great. Uh, thanks to Dash on camera. Thanks to Slynn running things behind the scenes. Enigma for organizing this whole thing to begin with. Uh, Twitch John for front paging this. The chat mods for keeping things sane. Uh, thanks to DJC and Bloodsire for casting. Thanks to Mr. Slynn for you know, also coming in and casting every now and then. Uh, thanks to all you guys for watching. Uh, thanks to you guys, we hit 6,000 followers on the Team Fortress TV Twitch channel today, so that's a huge benchmark, or I should say landmark for us. But, uh, you know, don't go anywhere just yet, because we have some members of Mixup coming into the channel now for a post-game interview. Right now we have Harblue in here. How you doing, Harblue? Hi. Um, it looks like it's just me for now. I don't know if any of them want to come also. Uh, hmm. So, Harblue, well, congr <laughs> congratulations on your win. Thank you, I forgot what it felt like being 19. Yeah, no, that's a, it's a huge victory, and I'm sure you guys um, feel very, uh, very proud of it. Of course, unfortunately, you guys dropped twice to it during the regular season, but, you know, going into the land, you guys have the most recent victory, so that kind of puts the ball in your court. Uh, so maybe you want to speak to that a little bit? How does it feel to, you kind of mentioned it, how does it feel to finally take down it? You know that it's in your capability. <laughs> um... I mean, going into this match or this tournament, we really like haven't put almost any effort into TF2 just because like our land seeds are already locked up. So, you know, our viaduct week, we like, you know, melee only and off class and everything like that. And we haven't really been screaming that much. So we didn't really know, like we kind of expected to get rolled just because of, you know, we're kind of out of practice. 
And, uh, you know, after the first match with him on Gully Wash, we were pretty much at, like, the lowest we've been all season. There was, like, a lot of fighting going on within the team. Me and Tyler were arguing a lot with each other. So, um, you know, to be able to go from that to, like, the complete turnaround at the end on Viaduct with a 4-0 win, I mean, it, it just feels great. And, uh, you know, people actually, if we start playing in hours again, I think that is how we can play normally. So, Harblow, I have a question about the way you guys played that Viaduct. I really liked the defensive, uh, I guess, strategy that you guys had. Was that, was that, is that a new thing? I can't say I've ever seen Viaduct played defensively in that manner before, and it's, it, it, it's something that really interested me. Uh, I'll, t I'll take credit for that one. Yeah, normally people know us on Viaduct. We always just love to go into the other team, just, you know, push into them and try and get their medic before he comes out. Um, you know, going into this Viaduct match, I decided to completely change how we do our holds. And after the first mid, which we took, I was like, all right, we're just going to hold back here. We have a great advantage, and they're going to have to try and come force me. Because originally it was just meant to prevent forces, because we know IT likes to do a four-person suicide with their demo and just have a scout build with a med and spawn. So we were like, if we hold here and have our whole team just sitting back here, it's impossible for them to force us. And then... You know, after it worked well on that, we just decided to do that for all of our holds. If in one, both of us had Uber, and it just ended up being like the best hold that we've ever had. Cool. What'd you guys think about when they told you the map was going to be Viaduct? Because me and Lang had kind of thrown around the the point that you guys are traditionally pretty pretty damn good on Viaduct, uh, especially on teams where Platinum has been the demo on mix up versions where Platinum has been the demo. Um, so, what'd you guys think about that choice? <laughs> um, we weren't like particularly fond of it, um, just because IT on Cold Plant, their scouts gave us so much trouble, and Koth is one of those game types where scouts can just run around, get behind you, and roll your team. So we made it a point going into it to make sure that Squid played with our combo a lot more, a combo by me and our demo, and you know, we knew that if we did that, it would be a lot closer, because some of those Cold Plant rounds were really close too, we just got unlucky. Uh, and fortunately on Viaduct, you know, we had a couple really close rounds that we ended up somehow clutching Tyler at the end there again, like the crazy one on four or something. So we weren't like particularly excited about it, but we knew we could win it because, yeah, we used to be amazing at this map and hopefully we are again now. All right. Awesome stuff. Thank you for coming in for the interview. In, in, interview, interview, hard blue. Interview. <laughs> that, yeah, hard thanks, blue. thanks for casting like this whole thing. I mean, you guys were at this what? Like six hours or something like that it, it, was, it was pretty long but yeah we're finally going to wrap <laughs> up this the first ever team fortress tv zoe invitational once more i'd just like to thank zoe for sponsoring this event and if you guys watching the stream liked what you saw please let zoe know go tweet at them go email them go drive down to their offices and knock on their door just tell them that you want to see more that you want to see them support more competitive tf2 and we will do our best to bring you more events like this so once more, for everyone here at TeamFortress.tv, for the Zoe Invitational, myself and Blood Sour here casting, DJC casting before me, Dash on the camera, Enigma and Slynn working behind the scenes to make this happen, all the chat mods, everybody watching at home, thank you very much. This is Lang closing it out. Good night. <laughs>